today's video, we've got the review of the LG F60. I'm just to give you my thoughts and opinions, what I liked about the handset, and also a few things where I thought LG could have perhaps improved on. Now, there wasn't really too much hype surrounding this phone on release, compared to, say, the LG G3 or the LG G Flex 2. In all honesty, it's a pretty good phone for what it is. It is going to be the kind of handset that you're going to use if you're coming into the smartphone category, or you want an Android phone that's going to that's going to get the job done. It's going to do anything a high-end phone can do, but on just a lower budget. So before we jump into the actual review and I talk about a few things I liked and also a couple of things that perhaps LG could have changed, we'll just go over a few of the specs. Now the internal storage only comes in at 4GB, which you know could be better, but you do have the micro SD slot, which is always nice to have. We've got a quad-core 1.2GHz processor. At the moment, it's running Android 4.4 KitKat. Hopefully LG will bring out the 5.0 update in the near future. It's also got a 2100 milliamp hour battery. And it's also got an Adreno 306 GPU along with a Snapdragon 410 chip. So just as a very quick disclaimer, at the time of me making this video, the handset's priced in around about £100 to £120, which personally I think is a pretty good and fair price for this kind of phone. One of the handsets which you may also look at if you're in this kind of price range and for a phone of this spec is probably the Moto G is the one that stands out the most. Um, and even that for the price, very good handset, absolute bargain. And if you're coming onto Android for the first time or you just want a good basic smartphone, this is going to get the job done. Both of these are going to do you fine. So we'll just start off with the actual build quality of the phone. Now it has got the plastic back end, which you're going to probably expect on a on a handset of this kind of price. So the screen size of the handset comes in at four and a half inches, which is a good size, especially if you're coming onto a smartphone for the first time or you're making a jump from perhaps a smaller phone. The only drawback is probably the pixel count and the resolution of the handset. I mean, the PPI comes in at 207 and the pixel count comes in at 480 by 800. When you're watching YouTube, the only thing is you can't watch HD video, which is probably one of the only drawbacks I've actually found with the screen. I mean, if it had the capability to watch HD videos, you know, it's going to be up there. Now, the button layout is pretty straightforward and fairly standard on most Android phones today. On the right-hand side, we've got the power button, and on the left-hand side, we've got the volume rocker. Now, one of the cool features which you do have on here is the knock to wake. Now, on most handsets at this price, they're going to have to cut corners some places. And LG do this on the speaker. Speakers, you know, it's pretty average. It's not great. I mean, if you're going to want to listen to music, you're going to probably hook up the phone to a Bluetooth speaker or put it in some sort of external speaker and play out the music or whatever you're listening to that way. Now, at the time we're making the video, it's running Android KitKat 4.4. I imagine LG will bring out the 5.0 update in the near future. Not too sure when it will be. So maybe when you're watching this video, you'll, you'll have the Android 5.0 update. Now, it's also got LG's personal skin on top, which is what we've had on the LG G3, the G2, etc. And, you know, it's not too heavy. Probably not as heavy as Touch was is on Samsung. So it's quite nice LG have tried to keep it as plain as possible, but... You can still definitely tell looking at the icons, etc., that it is an LG skin. Now, one of the good things about Androids, if you're if you've got an Android phone, is the ability to download a launch off the Play Store. So it could be the Nova launcher or the Google Now launcher. It's normally one of the first things I do if I buy an Android phone which isn't running stock Android. You've also got all your standard widgets you can add on there, such as the Google Calendar or a YouTube widget contacts your gmail account if you want to add any other email widgets on there so that's kind of nice to have and one thing i do like about android phones so the button placements all on the screen there isn't any on the actual handset itself apart from the power button and the volume rocker so you've got your return button the home button which if you hold down it will take you to google and then you've also got your multitasking button where you can flick between any open application and also close them down. Swiping down from the top you've got your notification panel where you can get to things such as wi-fi you know hotspot Bluetooth, battery saver, data, syncing, turning that on and off. You can also edit that so you can put more things in or remove things as you wish. Also got quick access to the brightness, which is nice to have. And then also the um, volume ringer, which is also nice to have, which you can get on there quickly. And then the rest of the panel will just show any notifications you've got for any messages or missed calls or social media, any emails that have come through. Now we'll quickly touch on gaming. I'm not the biggest of gamers, but just for the review of the handset, I thought I'd, you know, just play a few games on there. Probably not the handset is going to blow you away when it comes to gaming. I mean, the GPU isn't isn't the most powerful or quickest out there. And also the screen size, four and a half inch. You know, it's pretty small playing games on there. You probably want something a little bit bigger. But if you're just a kind of a, a casual gamer or if you're on your way to work on the bus, etc., then it's going to be fine if you want to play, I don't know, Angry Birds or whatever you want to play. It's going to do the job absolutely fine. 
So we'll take a quick look over the camera and I'll add some um, images and some videos in there just so you can kind of see what the handset is capable of doing. Um, as I said earlier on, it's, it's not the best handset for taking pictures and videos on, but you know it is an entry-level phone and that's where these kind of manufacturers are going to have to cut down the cost and um, save some money. So the camera has got a 5 megapixel rear-facing camera and in the front-facing just, it's just a standard VGA. I mean, the layout's easy to navigate around. You've got your settings, you've got different modes. You can flip between, obviously, front and rear camera. You can toggle the flash on and off. And you've also got the actual camera shutter button, and you can flip between record there. And you've also got a preview where you can go back to any images you've taken before or also any videos. Now, one cool feature that we've got is the clenching of the fist to take a selfie or a front-facing photo. So if you clench your fist in the frame, the camera will pick that up and it will then start a three second countdown to take the picture, which is quite a cool feature to have on a phone like this. So we'll also briefly touch on the battery. Now it's got a 2100 milliamp hour battery, which, you know, it's okay. It's not going to last you the whole day if you're a heavy user, but it's going to get you by if you're kind of a light user, checking emails and calls and texts every now and again. One good thing about it is that it is removable, so if you are on a long day out or if you're on a long journey, then you can carry a spare battery if you want to. They've also got battery saver on there, which is just something you can enable just to try and get maximum life out of the battery and using it. So that covers off the review of this. I mean, for the price of this handset, between 100 and 120 pounds, it's a very good buy. The only major drawback, as I did mention about the screen, is just that there is no HD videos on YouTube, um, which for me personally, I watch YouTube a lot. But if you're someone that just wants it for browsing the web, Facebook, Twitter, etc., responding to emails and just standard phone calls and text messages, you're going to be absolutely fine. So that wraps it up for this video. If you have any questions on this, then just please leave them below and I'll, I'll make sure I respond to you. Any feedback, also leave it below. Don't forget to find us on Twitter at OneComUK and I'll see you all in the next one.